We really care about Dobby. What can I say? Yes, the diehards. So I, I want to apologize. I'm actually a little under the weather, <coughs> and I was like, considering contacting Stuart and saying, yeah, I'm just not going to be able to make it tonight. And then I thought, La Hopdale in the world, there are people who go out with their drinking buddies on Saturday night. This is my group of singing buddies every Monday night. <laughs> so, just had to make it. Okay, we are up to Hazar's Hashats in the Shmona Esrei of Shabbos Shabbos. If you are in the Art Scroll Sitter, you'll find that on page 420. Now, when is it that you begin Hazar's Hashats? First, there should be 10 people. Now, it is true that theoretically, if you have six people that are responding, and you have 10 people that are part of the minion, you can begin Hazar's Hashats. So, as an example, if you are in a professional environment, sometimes there are workplaces that form a minion, and uh, let's say, for example, a minion's at 2.45 on a work day, and you have to be out, many people have to be out to a meeting that's gonna begin at three o'clock. So, you know, if you do things quickly, you can usually finish a mitha within 15 minutes. But let's say, as often happens with these small minyanim, you only have 10, 11, 12 people and you don't have 10 people who are finished with Shmonets who you want to begin. A lot that is that you can, in fact, begin so long as there are six people responding. And in general, when there is no sort of constraint like that, we wait for 10 people. And what's generally done in a shul setting is that you do wait until 10 people are ready, uh, have already completed their Shmonets right before you begin to the shots. Additionally, People will typically wait for somebody on the Mizrach wall, whether it's the rabbi, the Rosh Yeshiva, you know, the next in line in a Yeshiva pecking order before they begin. So these are the two points you should keep in mind. Make sure there are 10 people. That's why you often see people sort of looking around and, you know, Menashe and Seth Katz, they do the calculating. They've got like this algorithm that can just scan a room <laughs> and then tell you whether there are 10 people that, uh, and the other thing is uh, to have the rabbi Barada Asra completed. Unless, you know, sometimes they'll tell you, uh, especially in uh, sometimes Yom Narayim or Yeshiva setting, if the rabbi wants to be able to dot and launch, but actually he'll let you know it's okay, don't wait for me, and then he certainly should go forward. Okay, <clears throat> now, Hashem Stephasai Tiptop Rufi Agitil Asecha. You say this before you begin your quiet Manesre. I've always said it as well before I begin Chazar Sashatz, because remember, Chazar Sashatz is essentially there so that you can dominate Shemot Esrei for people that can't dominate Shemot Esrei. There was a time before we had printed Sidurim that people didn't know the Nusuf and couldn't dominate. In fact, it's really interesting. If you go to shuls in Europe, especially old shuls, you'll see Tfilos up on the wall. We still have it in some communities, you'll see like Modem Durabanan right. <coughs> will be on the wall, or for example, Brip Shmei Damari Amo will be on the wall. But there are shuls that I've been to in Europe where they have many tefillos on the wall. And the reason for that was they couldn't get Sidurim for everybody. They wanted to make sure that everybody was able to participate. The more common tefillos people could say themselves, they had already memorized, but the ones that weren't, uh, they would have them on the wall. So, Chazar Shashatz is really there so that people can answer and be Yotze, thereby with your Shmona Esrei. And therefore, there are halachos about who can dominate for the Yomit. So, for example, there's halacha that if one of the members of the Tzibor is in some kind of conflict with the Shliat Tzibor, and they therefore, the Shliat Tzibor decides that he's not going to be Motzi somebody, nobody is Yotze. He can't serve as a Shliat Tzibor if he has that intention with even one person because he needs to be there, so theoretically he can stand in for any person saying Shemot Esrei. And therefore, when you're saying Chazar Sashatz, you need to make sure that everybody can hear every part of the Chazar Sashatz, so again, you could theoretically be both see them. Where this comes in most often, and I'll address this when we get there, but where it comes in most often is with Modim, right? <clears throat> everybody bows when we say Modim, uh, so that is 426 in, in the Shabbat Shemot Esrei. What very often the Shliach Sibur does, because everybody else is saying modim, is they feel now they have time for a breather, you know, they uh, <clears throat> can play with their tie and then loosen up and uh, do some lip trills. But really, it's critically important that at least 10 people hear that modim out loud, so that the Shliach Sibur is serving in their primary function 
of completing the entire Shemona Esri out loud so people can be Yotze. It's very important to know if you're in a, a room where people are sitting way far in the back, you know, if you're davening for like a high school minion and all the cool kids like to like sit in the back and nobody's up front, you need to make sure that at least 10 people all the way in the back can hear you and that at every point there's at least 10 people that can hear you as you review, review Shemona Esri. Okay, with that said, uh, we'll begin with the Nusuf of uh, Shabbos Chazar Shabbos. <clears throat> now, uh, as you would always do, you bow at the beginning and the end of the first bracha, so you say, you know, bow at Baruch, and then bend over at Atah and raise yourself up on Hashem. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Be'ohev Oseinu. You noticed how I paused slightly after Hashem. This is just something that comes with experience, but remember, the sleeper is supposed to say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo, so Baruch Atah Adonai. You hold it. Eloheinu Be'ohev Oseinu. Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov, Ho'el, Ha'gadol, Ha'gibar, Banara, El Avion, Gomel, Chasalim, Tovim, Vekonei Yaakov, Vizocher, Chasdei, Avos, Umevi, Goel, Vibnei, Vineham, Laman, Shmo, V'yahavo. If it is during the Aserah Sumei Tshuva, you would pause here, the T would say Zafrenu, and then you would repeat after them, so Fein Elohim. The Nusuf there, what I always do is I just read it straight. I don't do it with any kind of Shabbos So I just say, So Fein Elohim, Melech Chafetz Vachayim, Bechazveinu Vesefer Achayim, Laman Cha Elohim Chayim. Melech Ozer, Umoshia Umagein, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magein Abraham. And of course, if it's between Pesach and Sukkot, you'd say, Now, an important note, because this is the first time that we're doing Hezra Shashat. If you are in Eretz Yisrael, and there are even some Nusos here in America, where they say, even if they're not the, the um, Nusel Svart, so Nusuf Svar does say Mordechai Hatal, but in Eretz Yisrael, even Nusuf Ashkenaz, the non-Svar Nusuf, always says Mordechai Hatal, and there's some Tzibras that do this, so just be aware of this. What I always try to do is make sure that I have a sitter that they use there. So for example, the sitter that I usually carry in my Talos bag is an American like red art school sitter. I think it's called the Yitzhak Yari, which is basically the Hebrew, the all Hebrew uh, American version. When I go to Eretz Yisrael and I adopt the oven in Eretz Yisrael, I try to make sure to have a blue version of the Art School Sitter because they have an Art School Sitter that's printed for Eretz Yisrael, where they have these slight variations, like, for example, the Morita Hatal. Now, it's not a big deal, but the only thing, as we talked about the very first class, there is a mental game. So if you forget that Morita Hatal, in Eretz Yisrael, it will take a fraction of a nanosecond before people jump on you, and it, it can throw you off. Like, whoa, whoa, what did I just do? You just forgot what that's all. So I, just so that you should be aware and it shouldn't throw you up, always try to make sure that you have the local sitter, whatever it is. Um, and that, that even goes if I'm in a, like a sort, of, sort of a more non-orthodox environment where I assume that they're going to be doing the tefillah, la medina, or whatever else. I'll make sure to have the current sitter. I'll make sure to have whatever sitter I need so that I can have the tefillahs they're going to use. Okay. Mashi baruach, marida ge'eshem, mechal ke'el chayim v'chesed, and then again, Sarah's made Chuba, I would be silent, they would say Micha Mocha, and I would say, Micha Mocha Barachamim. Now, up until now, the nusuf that I've done for Shachris is identical to the, to the nusuf that's used for Mosuf. And it's the same way with the Brachos Rishonos, the first three Brachos of Shmon Esri, as we all know. Every Shmon Esri has the first three Brachos that are identical, the last three Brachos are identical, and it's what goes in the middle of the sandwich that adds the excitement to the Shemona Esrei. So in Shabbos, we have one bracha. 
on uh, you know, a typical Schmidt asteroid, we have 19 brachos, which would be a total of 13 brachos in the middle, and so on. Uh, the nusach for the first three brachos and the last three brachos of the Shabbos Shmon Esrei uh, for Shachris and for Musa is identical. The major difference is right over here with this Mechai HaMesim. And I'll point that out for you. The Shachris nusach for Mechai HaMesim is Baruch Atah Adonai Mechaye HaMesim. The Musaf nusach is Baruch atah Adonai Mechaye HaMesim. And otherwise it's the same. So again, for Shachras you do Baruch atah Adonai Mechaye HaMesim. Then the Tzibur does the first part of Nechadesh. And you would wait until they're finished and you would say Nechadesh Es Shimcha Ba'olam Keshem Shemakishim Oso Bishmei Barom Kakosu Bayan Nibiecho Vikaro Zel Zev Yomar So just to point out some rules of the road, when you'd say Vikaro Zel Zev, you'd turn to the left when you say Vikaro Zev, and then you say El Zev, you turn to the right, and the Amar you'd bow for it. So Looks like this. Kaka suvayani viecho, vikaro ze el ze viomar. Then you lift yourself up on your feet, on your toes, when you say kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. For each one of those three times you say kadosh, you lift yourself up. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Adonai tzibos, mulavaretz kivoto. What's going to happen? Yeah. I want to just point out, that you wait for the congregation to say that first, and then you sort of overlap with them, right? When the Kadosh Kadosh? Uh, the Kadosh, oh, so actually, I do that, I was about to, to get into that. Okay. I say that at the same time as the Tzibur says it. So, the Chazan should say it, the Chazan shouldn't be silent. No, the Chazan, and also, we all say it together, so I would certainly begin with them. I personally say Kadosh Kadosh Kadosh, that stands of that uh, sentence together with the Tzibur, and then I wait, and I begin with us we call. Okay. Yeah. At, the, at an earlier lecture, Rabbi Rosenbaum said that, in response to a question, what if there are people who have not finished yet, they've not caught up with the Amida, um, you know, they're not ready to do Kedusha, but they're still davening. And the Rabbi says, when the Kedusha start, they stop what they're doing, and they listen for the Kedusha in order to be Yotze with the Chazim. And for that reason, he suggested that the Chazim repeat Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh after the congregation said it sort of catching on the last bit of their word and saying it so that other people can hear it fully from the chazan. Interesting. So he was saying that the chazan would be mozi, those people who were still davening from an esrei. Right. For kadosh the kadosh, 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 kad
then once again, Baruch Kod Hashem and Kamo, where Rosenbaum would say that you say it a little bit later, I personally have always said it at the same time as the Tzibor, and then I would say Mim Kompa. Now my personal meaning is to always sing Mim Kompa. People like when you sing Mim Kompa. The easiest Mim Kompa to sing is the Kralach tune, which I'll sing now. Uh, and uh, I'll share a couple other variations that people tend to like and are fairly easy. But the Kralach tune goes, Mi Oh, 
So I have the same question in a way because if we're taught not to repeat, you know, you're not yeah. supposed to say the same. So if you've already said it silently, then saying, singing it again with the chasm is repeating what you just said. You would right? just sing the tune. You just la la la. Yeah, exactly. I right. see. Just the music, not the So words. the other thing is to maybe not say it silently and just sing it with the chasm, wait for them to sing and do it, or no? Yeah, but the way that tefillah was set up is that this responsive. Right. That is that. Uh, so you're supposed to say, it, say that yes. Yeah, so and then just la la. But then you can't hear the chazan at all. If the whole, I mean, at KMS, the whole congregation la la la's, and you have no idea what the chazan is saying. You never hear the words of the chazan. You, you're, and you're saying the problem with that would be that ten people wouldn't hear it. Yeah. But I would imagine that ten people that are close to the end would probably would hear it. And maybe they're the ones. Who if, if the chazan is doing his job, in other words, it is possible the chazan is hey, they're doing la la la. I can sort of step back and take a breather. That's wrong. That's why I, I mentioned. So the Hasen. fact that I don't hear him doesn't mean other people don't hear him. Right. I never thought of right. that. Okay. But as a cousin, you always should try to make sure that at least ten people hear you. I see. But I'll, I'll be honest, you know, and it, it's certain shoals, certain shivos, especially during Yom Noraim, when uh, they get into certain parts of tefillah, there's no way that everybody can hear the cousin. Right. But that's okay, so long as the people that are close to the cousin can't hear. I see. Okay. And it is certainly the cousin's job to make sure that they can be heard to at least ten people. Yeah. Some, sometimes I am. It sounds almost a little bit like a kumsu. Like they start a nice tune like this, and they're you know, and it's and they're very quiet, and they and they want everyone to kind of sing along, and you're not going to hear them. And I know I see what you're saying. If you have a hundred people, it's hard to hear them. But I was I think like you're saying the cause is supposed to be leading, saying as loudly as he can, and people join into it. But some people are very quiet. You know, they find it more meaningful, like almost like an NCSY thing. You know, like a certain you know like. Right. That kind 
tune, that doesn't sound right to me. It, so I, I think it is a mistake if they're saying it so quietly that people can't hear it. Right. That would be a mistake. I think some people just, frankly, they, they want a little bit of a break. And if there are a number of people who are dominating, that gives them some time to you know, breathe and not have to put out a lot of sound. I would say a very quick story just because uh, it happened here. I guess this would never happen normally, but there was a bar mitzvah boy. And what he was doing was he was starting a tune. Like, I sometimes we see like the Tao by him. Sure, that. sure. So what he would do is he started the tune, and he didn't know that he had to say all the words. Right. So when you were switching, I began noticing something wasn't right, like I was missing something, and he wasn't, he was only saying what he thought he had to. Right. And Rabbi Ingram was kind of looking over, and everyone's looking, like, what is going on? And his father runs up to teach him. But yeah, right. I, don't, I don't think we need to know that lesson. That was very odd. Right, right, that's right. And, and that's exactly what we're right. and we're being sensitive to, is there really is that responsibility on the part of the positive to read every part of the monastery. Absolutely. I'll tell you a, a very funny story I just heard this weekend. Um, have you, I don't know if you've heard of Rabbi David or Debbie Greenblatt. You might have heard of Rabbi Nutter Greenblatt, who's a Greenblatt in, in Tennessee, right in Memphis. He is a massive Talmud He He's a very close Talmud of Ramosha Feinstein. And what he's taken it upon himself to do is to write Gidim. He does incredible work for Kali Yisrael. You know, his son, who uh, we ate at this Friday night, or this uh, Shabbos lunch, was telling us some stories of the people he had to hunt down. He, he had to once go and write a get for somebody who was part of the mafia. And <laughs> he, he had to get like, special protection, I can't even tell you. Um, apparently there were people who made it a habit of going into a community. Their sort of parnasa was they go into a community, they earn trust, and they would marry somebody, they would take out some big loan from somebody in the community, whatever, $100,000, $500,000, and they disappear. And they pop up a year later in another community and start the spiel over again. But in the meantime, the wife was left in Aguna. So what Roy Nutter Greenblatt would do is he would get in touch with the mother, and he would find out where the son is, and through them, he would give him gift. Very, very interesting. So he told me about uh, the famous chazan uh, Yeslo Rosenblatt. So Yeslo Rosenblatt was the best known chazan. And what was unique about him is that at the time that he was very popular, Hazanas was very popular. Yeah, apparently the old timers, when they would listen to a piece of Hazanas, they could lose themselves in it. They'd be like transported to a different world. So that was a time that was sort of the golden age of Hazanas. And he was the greatest of the Hazanas, but he was not only a very passionate Jew, but he was passionately committed to trying to increase the Yiddish faith in the country. In fact, I, I mentioned that we were on Friday Yeshiva, and the gift that they gave us was very, very heartwarming and very personal. Rabbi uh, Cantor Rosenblatt published uh, a sort of tour of magazine in the United States called Their Yiddish Lift. They published it, he published it with Roy Weissmondel, who got to be known for the work they did to try to save Jews from the Holocaust. They published it, I think, for a year or two, and eventually they, they were just completely ran out of funding. They could they had sort of you know, mortgaged their homes, done whatever they could to publish this magazine. But the, the moral of the story, the point of the story, the reason I was telling it is because Yussel Rosenblatt used to say, I charge extra because I also dot in the quiet mm -hmm. Now because you know, the typical chasin, for them the responsibility was singing and making noise at the parts that people would be listening to. So why do the quiet monastery? So Yes and Rosenblatt is I charge more because I do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a little piece of history. Uh, so we have said that again. Okay, when you get to the end of Mashiach to Kepha, everybody should join in together and you say along with them, And then you continue on with Lador Vador. Lador Vador, uh, together with Kedusha, takes the place of Ata Kadosh, and therefore, uh, if you had said Kedusha and the door of a door, you would skip Ata Kadosh. Important to know. Uh, when I was first beginning my career as a cousin, when I was 13 years old after my bar mitzvah, I had a very embarrassing moment. My family moved to Israel three days after my bar mitzvah. I was asked to dab a mitzvah at our day school, which had, I think, about 700 kids. And I was like the you know, greenhorn American uh, who had never dabbed for the Yomit at a mitzvah, but said, hey, well, you know, why not give us a shot? And I said the door to door and I said Ata Kadosh in front of the school of 700 kids. So please don't repeat my mistake. When you say the door to door, you have taken care of Ata Kadosh and you continue on. Uh, and this is far, and interestingly, they don't say the door to door, they do say Ata Kadosh. 
So our Mishnah is the door of a door, Nike, God Lecha, who in eight times it's a hint to saw Nike, Vishibaka, Elohim, who may feel a emotional love ahead, Yom Melkado, Kado, Shato, Boru, Katado, no, Hoel, Hakadosh. And then you continue on with the Nusuf of the Shmonesra, or in this case of the Amida. Yismach Moshe ve'onas halko, ki evan emon kurosu lo, ki lil tiferes, perosho nasat alo, ve'am lo fanef al har sinoi, rushne luchos alonim ori biodo, v'chosu bohem, shmirah shabos, v'chein kasu v'soro secho, v'shamru b'nei Yisrael sa shabos, v'aso se sa shabos v'zor son b'rit olom, v'ni 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 Yisrael osi l'olom, Kishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishishish
children in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, they have Birch Hashkonen every day, and they do it by both Shachars and Musaf. In the United States, or Kutzlaritz, the only time, we're not Sparty, they do not Mizrach, the only time that we do Birch Hashkonen in Shachris would be on Simchas Torah. Simchas Torah because people do get drunk, and I know that uh, Mr. Chinason believes that this not something should be done, but because Jews have been doing it for a long time, our concern is that the Kohanim will be drunk when we get to Birchas Kohen and Musaf, and a Kohen cannot duffin if he's had a Revias of wine or an equivalent of alcoholic beverage. Uh, so therefore, uh, a Kohen should uh, not duffin. Uh, in, in, we are concerned that the Kohanim would duffin in Musaf, and therefore we duffin at Shachris on Simchas Torah. Um, but as I said, in Eretz Yisrael, they would do Birchas Kohen here. At this point in Dabi. Now, the way it works, just so you should know, is it, most often the Chazan says Kohanim, which is to call the Kohanim to begin their bracha. In some Sibors, the Minig is that there's somebody, a guy or somebody else who does the Kohanim. So, what I always do is I wait for just a moment to hear if somebody's saying Kohanim, and if they're not saying it, then I say Kohanim. And then uh, they would say their bracha. And you would say Yivarech Ha Hashem Yishvarech Ha. So Yivarech Ha Adonai Yishvarech Ha. And the Quran would say, uh, they would repeat after you. Really important to remember the Amen, right? So after you say Yishvarech Ha, the Quran say Yishvarech Ha. Don't start Yair. Let everybody answer Amen and then start Yair. Now, most often, unfortunately, we're not going to be in Eretz Yisrael, and therefore what we do is the equivalent of Birchus Kohanim, what we do in here in Chutz Lartz. Eloheinu v'elohei avoseinu, baruchinu barucha mishulashes, batarach zuvainu v'shabdecha, ha'amara v'piyaronu v'nav, v'anim amktoshecha k'amor, yivarecha adonai v'yishvarecha, and you wait for the Zebra's king here and so on, yoher adonai panavelecha v'ifunecha, and again you wait for king here and so on, yisar adonai panavelecha, V'yaseim l'cha shalom. Svim shalom tova v'rachachin v'chesed v'rachim v'minu v'akul shram echa. V'rachinu v'minu k'lonu k'echa v'yor p'necha. Ki v'yor p'necha s'atolonu adonai Eloheinu. Torah as'chayim avas ha'esed. U'tzaka v'racha v'rachim v'chayim v'shalom. V'tau v'necha l'v'recha s'am p'yitzrael. V'chol e'zim chal shalom v'shalom echa. Baruch atah Adonai, Hamim Barech, Es Amo Yisrael, Ba'ashalom. What you as the Chazid do next is you begin with Kedusha, I'm sorry, with Kedusha, with Kaddish. But before you say Kaddish, you should silently say, Yiu l'ratzon imar yifi v'hayyom yibi l'manach adinoi tzuri v'goali. So you'll notice there's a brief pause in between when the Chazid finishes the last bracha of Shalom, and when he begins uh, Kedusha, the reason why is because he's saying, The Kaddish that you would say here, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I'm happy this is value added. So, whatever fee you're paying for this, which is, I think, a uh, grand fee of $0, uh, or your show membership, whatever it is. <laughs> Um, now, the Kedusha over here, somebody before brought up the, the major minor Kedusha. So, my personal preference is to do the Kedusha in minor. If you do the more Chazanish Kedusha, which is in major, this is where you would do it. So, that more Chazanish Kedusha, which is in major, goes, Yiskadal, Yiskadash, Mei, Rava, Viyama, Dibra, Chusev, Amit, Mahusev, Vachai, Echon, Vachan, Vachai, Lobes, Yisrael, Pagalo, Bismai, Kari, Vibru, Amen. H may rabba me bara, may Allah may Omaya, Yisbara, Yisbara, Vishala, Yisbara, and so on. Now, my personal preference is to do the other Kedusha, the other Kaddish, which is Yisgadav, Yisgadash, may rabba, be all the body brought here, say, let me, Mahu say, the high home, give me her home, the whole base, Israel, Pagalo, Bismarck, Karib, Rome. Now, 
Leila, Alvin Cobra, Massa, Vichira, Saw, Tish Brasa, Vichira, Nami Ron, Vichira, Vichira, Main. Now, here's where you can earn your stripes as a Chazam. Uh, what separates the men from the boys is whether you sing Tiscado. Now, it's, it's something that I like to do, and people generally like it if you have a nice, quickly paced, kind of happy, clappy tune. People really get into this. So, well, some of my favorites are Tiscado, I belt to love, so no movie you, so. Although, make sure to wait for a man, that's really important. Some people forget. Before you begin taking out the Sefer Torah. Oh, shocks. Oh, that's a full Kaddish. Shocks, yeah. Shocks. yeah. It's called shock, uh, the, uh, that, could do, that full Kaddish is called the Kaddish Tiskabal because it yeah. includes the part where we say Tiskabal Tzolosa, and we're asking Hashem to accept that, our feelings. That's a Karpa uh, Kaddish part. I've never heard of that before. Thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's a Karpa. Karpa too. It is. I moved to the I was, yeah, I, 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 right. I Right, so you know, there are other I, things I, you can do. Uh, be aware, yeshivas don't like this. Yeshivas just like having only. Um, the uh, Keladom and Kedusha, those are the only two tunes they tolerate. But in other settings, certainly, young Israel shul, oh, you shul, you're pretty much safe. Okay, now you get up to what's a safer Torah. We're going to use the young Israel Nussel because that's, I think, what's certainly most common for people here. Where you would begin with is, En kamal v'amelim adonai, v'en kemasecha, malchusecha malchus kololamim, now I should mention for all these parts you're going to be standing down here. So if you're standing at the oven, you're going to stand down here. I'll point out to you, you don't go up until Grinch Shemay. So you're going to stay down, but you're going to sing all these tunes. At this point, the person who's been given the honor of opening the Arn Kodesh opens the Arn, and you continue with We all say Brit Shemay. At this point, it's le legit. You, you don't have to go up at this point, but this is, it's during the recit recitation, the Zebra's recitation of Brit Shemay, where you'll walk up. And typically, this is how the arrangement will go. You'll have the person who opened up the Aram, they'll sort of be standing off to the side. Very often, the Gada will be up here to point out which sacred Torah should be taken out by the Chazin. So you want to make sure that you figure out which one. And if you don't know which one, you should make sure to ask. Because usually somebody there will know. The reason why is because once you take a Sefer Torah out, you can't put it back in the arm. It's considered a desire to the Sefer Torah. So if by mistake, you take the wrong Sefer Torah, and if you happen to be you know, smack in the middle of the Chumash, or you happen to be even you know, partial somewhere, by Midbar or wherever, and you take a Sefer Torah that hasn't been touched since the Torah, and it's all the way at the end, or all the way at the beginning, it could be a lot of rolling up there at the oven. So it's really worthwhile. If you can't quickly tell 
by, let's say, the silver, sometimes there'll be like a silver plate on the safer toy that will say Kriya or Shabbos or something like that. It's worthwhile to make sure that you know which safer toy is up there. Another fair question to ask of the person who's up here, and it's a good time to do it during birth May, is what is the root? How is it that you're supposed to take the safer Torah to the oven? So in a place like Shomer, it's fairly straightforward. You just go down the right-hand side, and you bring the safer Torah up. But there are other shoals where it's not as clear. You know, I was just recently in the white shoal in uh, Morocco, and they have like this interesting route. They go like around sometimes, especially if you're on a more balchuba oriented shoal, they'll bring it to the women's side. If you're on like a really sort of left-leaning, modern orthodox shoal, there'll be a woman who will take it up. Uh, you know, they do this at um, Hillel University of Maryland on the way back in. So it's, it's worthwhile to be aware of what the minigam of is, what the root is, so that you, you don't wind up in the wrong place as you're bringing the Sefer Torah down. So you'll have, uh, as I said, the person that opens the Sefer Torah becomes the Gabbai, and very often the president, who is very often seated to the right of the Aram Kodesh, and the rabbi, who is seated to the left, will all be up there. So you've got quite an entourage. So what you'll do is you'll come up, you'll stand off to the side, and then you'll begin with Be'an Arachis. Be'an Arachis, Belish me Gadish or Gadish or Yakira, Adai Martus Beta, Yehe Rabota Dama, Tisita Piboi, the Oraiso, Bisashi Michal in the Piboi, Believe of the Palama Israel, Leta Buka in the Lishwa. you'll be given a Sefer Torah. You'll take it in your right arm. It's important to note that if you're, it's a, a Shabbos where there's more than one Sefer Torah, so it's a Shabbos for a Kodesh or a Shabbos tonic or something like that, you want to make sure that all the Sefer Torah are given out before you begin. So sort of a rookie mistake sometimes is to launch right into Shema Yisrael as soon as you get your Sefer Torah. Best thing is to wait until they're closing the arm because then you know for sure that everybody's got the Sefer Torah that they need all the crowns have been put on. That's sort of like your symbol. When they start closing the arm, you know you've got all the accoutrements, you've got the right number of Sefer Torah, and so on. And with that, you would turn, turn to the Tzibor. You turn to the Tzibor for Shema and Echad, and then you turn back and bow for Gadlu. So you would turn to the Tzibor and you'd say, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai And then for the final stanza, you turn around, holding the Sefer Torah, and you bow and you say Gablu, as will everybody else up here, so the rabbi, the president, the Gabi, whoever else, they'll all bow. And then the tune that you'll sing as you bring the Sefer Torah to the oven is I also try to say al hakol if I can, and avarach. Uh, with that, you would say silent. At this point, you've completed the chakras davening. Uh, you are now a rock star. You'll get high fives. You'll get extra times with the kiddush. Um, your wife will consider you a hero, and uh, life is good. <laughs> any any questions about chakras? Those are some shots. Yeah. Comment. I was davening my brother Shalom in Cleveland. They do Bayan Rafid, they repeat it, which I hadn't heard before. Bayan Rafid, Bayan Rafid. And he kept warning me about it, but I just wasn't used to it. And the rabbi's up there, and he's like going again. Right, that is true. That is true. It's less common, but there are some people that do that. So let me just do that for the video so that we have it recorded. But the way that would go is. Bayan Rafid. 
So, for example, where we most often apply is, let's say, for example, with the, uh, the Shemot Esrei. Do you do their Shemot Esrei or your Shemot Esrei? Right? You know, this is an excellent question. I've always done, sorry to say, I've, uh, I've done mine, but I don't know that I'm right. Um, and I thank you for bringing this up. It's a very fair question. Uh, I want to send that upstairs also. Yeah? The same question with Kedusha. Well, so the Kedusha, you always do what the Seabor is doing. So even if you are, let's say for example, Nusuf Ashkenaz, if you're adopting a Nusuf Svar Keilah, you should always say, let's say for example, which in chakras, we say Nekadesh, they say Keser, or not Keser, they say uh, Naritzva, right? Chakras say Naritzva, and Muslim they say Keser. You're always supposed to do the Kedusha that they're doing. That's also during the week. I, 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 I should off, I, I didn't mean what the Hazen does. When, I'm just saying, a member of the congregation, when, you're, when they're saying, would the individual say his own? No. That's, that's an interesting thing. Even certainly when you're adopting by yourself, let's say this is a, a Nusuf Hashemaz Kehila, and you adopt Nusuf Svar. So that's fine. You know, you can say there was Kriya Shema with Nusuf Svar, and you can say Shema Nesri with Nusuf Svar. When it comes to Kedusha, though, you're supposed to always do what the Zebra is doing. So you would actually do a Nusuf Hashemaz Kedusha. Or if you're in a Lubavitch Shul, you would do a Nusuf Hari Kedusha. That is, I'm trying to think if there's any other area where you always go with what the seaboard does. That's the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. You would always do the fiducia that the seaboard's doing. That's all I Okay, but good question about that, that Shtulish ministry. I've always kind of wondered it. Like all the, it's like, um, from what I understand, like kids over the years will force you to deal with all the like words that you don't want to in some way. You know, all your like inconsistencies and like your little so I guess this is what this experience is for me. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Have a great week, friends. Um, I unfortunately will not be here next week because I have a conference in Baltimore. Okay. So uh